Doesn't matter. But I, I'm, I'm soft, man. I love my boys, man. I love on yeah. my boys, too. My 13-year-old, man, I hug him and kiss him on the forehead. Yeah. And, and, and you know, um, that's one thing I think fathers got to – they can't forget about their boys, man. Mm. I love my boys. And, and I'm affectionate with my boys, right? I remember one time, because my oldest son, you know, we split between him and him. You know, me and his mom. Mom, um, yeah. And uh, I remember I went to school one day because I'm always a dad that show affection. And I went to school and I saw him. They wouldn't let me back because I had to do a background check or something stupid. And so I remember seeing him and I, he was getting ready to leave and I hugged him, kissed him on the forehead. I love you, boy. And I held him a little longer. He started, he started tearing up. Yeah. And that's because young boys need that love from their daddy too. Dude. They got mama. Fathers they lay on mama. Matter, man. But your your daddy is something different, bro. Even today, man, I love my dad, man. My dad is my hero. Yeah. And when my dad show me love, it's different than when my mama do. My mama, my mama, of course, she kissed me and, and Brandon, oh, I love you, my baby, you my baby. When my daddy hugged me and said, I love you, yeah. it's different. And almost even that a dad's approval. For me, it's yeah. like when my dad gives me approval, even today. Yeah. Like I call him, I'm like, hey dad. And this is a big deal. He's like, either way, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. Like, it's, it's something different when you're The amount of kids it. right now in America that don't have that yeah. kills me. Like, that's, that's why I want to adopt. It matters, man. man. That's why I want to adopt, man. Because, you know, me and my wife, you know, she, she's, but she'll be 41 this year. So she's a little skeptical on having more kids. We all know that the older you get, yeah, the, there's, there's the, risk and there's, there's complications. Risk involved. And I don't want her to go through that again, man. She, she, that was hard for her. She's type one diabetic. Yeah. And I felt bad the whole time. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm and sorry, there's not anything man. you can do. You I'm can just sorry. be like, I'm sorry, honey. I, 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 <laughs> I thought we wanted more kids, <laughs> yeah. okay? And uh, so I don't want to have to put her body through that and all yeah. that stuff either. So, but, you know, your story, and uh, I was watching the movie Sound of Hope, which, okay. is, which is a crazy, incredible movie. I can't wait till it come out. But, man, I was on the, t- on the plane tearing up the whole movie. I'm like, God, this lady don't think I'm depressed or something. But it was a great story, and I'm like, I'm a good man. I'm a good father. And I should be a father to way more kids than just two. Yeah. And it makes me feel like, and I'm glad you, you know, when you were telling me about you getting adopted at three, mm-hmm. is that's the right around the age that I want to adopt because my son is three. Yeah. And I'm like, I want, I want, God made me to have way more children than what I have. And being a loving and compassionate father is something I think is incredible to change people's lives forever. And I want to be that father to more than just my boys, yeah. right? I mean, I can Absolutely. mentor other people's kids, but I mean, there's nothing changed. like them living with you and you loving them. I just got a heart for loving kids, you know what I mean? And um, I, I think that me and my wife had talked and spoke about it, but I'm like, I need to adopt. I want to adopt a, a lot of kids, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got enough money to take care of a, a lot of kids. And God didn't just give me that money to, mm-hmm. to buy a Lamborghini, a Lamborghini or something. He, he gave me that money to be able to help these kids through life. And, and have somebody that love them. Have a man that love yeah. them. And what I'll tell you, though, is you can be a father to kids without adopting them. Right, true. Because there's a lot of opportunity out yeah. there to be a mentor and love kids and, and teens. And, you know, like we help the teen in our, our teens in our church. And there's a lot of ways that you, we, as older men and other men listening to this. Actually, yesterday, funny enough, we did a, a Father's Day special podcast oh, yeah, for me and my good. buddy. And it was just stupid. We were just having fun. <laughs> it, was a fun it was a fun podcast. But one of the things we did talk about is the fatherless epidemic in America. Yeah. And one of the worst things that good fathers can do is forget about other kids that aren't in their family. Yeah. And so, and not saying that you have to go adopt 50 kids, but I'm just saying, like, there are opportunities to make a difference in kids' lives. Sometimes it's just being a coach of a basketball team. Yeah. Like, second to fathers, coaches... Mm-hmm. have more of an impact in kids' life than any other profession. 100%. I remember my coach to this day, Coach Bob Jones, high school coach, white man, still me dip in his mouth. He used to paddle us with a paddle in 2005. If you cussed in the locker room, yeah. you got paddled. Yeah. White guy in an inner city school, number of black kids. <laughs> Just coach, spanking I, the crap out of these Spank you, dude. And nowadays, dude. <laughs> nowadays, nowadays, what would they do? They, yeah, they'll they'll, the they'll CPS crucify him. coming in. Yeah. They'll kill him, man. And he's the whip. I got whipped a couple times with that paddle. Yeah. He'll take it out on the field, hit yeah. you with it. Um, coach play Bob, around with Coach. Coach Bob Jones was a great man. I, I texted him like two days ago. I said, I love you, Coach. Yeah. Um, coach and Rogers, he's still calm coach, still calm coach. He, yep. He's forever. He's ever one of the greatest men yes, in my sir. life. He loved me. He loved us. 
that was something I didn't get from Coach Coach uh, Stoops. Mm. Reason reason why I didn't play for him like I did Coach Jones. Coach Jones was hard too. Yeah. I told you he whip mm-hmm. us, he call you crazy. He said you got to get some in your neck. He used to get on us, and us inner city boys he used to be hard on us. And when he left, because he took a job when I was a senior, and I cried like a baby, man. And um, everybody cried. All the dudes in there cried. All the gangsters cried yeah. when Jones, when Coach Jones went. But you know, he's still alive, and I tell him I, to you this day, knew I love he you. He loved you a hundred percent, man. He, yeah. he sacrificed, bro. Yeah. He sacrificed. He was a white dude from Nebraska with a dip in his mouth in an inner city school. The black people mm-hmm. hated him at first. Mm-hmm. They hated that man. Which is white dude going, coming to our school, and then you know we six time. Regional yeah, all champions. All of a sudden, they love that guy. Nine D1 yeah. players. I mean, I used to go to practice, bro. LSU will be there. Florida will be there. USC will be there. We got all these these uh, mm-hmm. college coaches at our high school in the hood, bro. They, they got to worry about getting shot. And um, mm. Coach Jones, Coach Rogers was a great coach too, man. He was the first person to interview. I got his number today. I need, I need to call him. He, he, my brother was closer to him, but he was the first person to introduce me to Christ, really. Mm. Because we used to go to church or whatever, but I never seen like a Christian. Like my dad was – you know, he'd go to church. Christian and he was Christian. Yeah, you know, yeah, we go to church right. and then after church, we listen to some, do whatever. But but he was the first person that showed me gospel music and showed me like a Christian family. Because mm. uh, I, I wanted to go to University. Of, my brother went to University of Texas. I used to be along Hook'em Horns. That was my favorite school. Cedric Benson was my favorite player, and he finally uh, I had a chance to go. But Coach Rogers was going with his wife and kids. Bro, I got in the car with them, and they prayed. I had never experienced nothing like that. As what ser- like serious, cult did I just serious walk Christians. Into? So yeah. he prayed and was like, and he asked for God. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I like it. We listen to gospel music, Christian music, Christian music the whole way. The first like 10 minutes, I was like, what did I get myself into? You got to think, I listen to hardcore rap, Tupac. Yeah. I'm like, what did I get myself into? Then I end up just, I like the presence of God was with him. And mm. I and, and I, I really felt empowered when he took me on that trip and he brought me back. Such a great man of God. Coach Rogers was, was was great. Them them are the two best coaches, yeah. and um, you know we had some coaches in college, but those two coaches really changed my life as a young man. Yeah, I uh, I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you my story real quick, and we'll start wrapping up. But my dad was my coach for a lot of sports, but that was weird. He actually kicked me out of two practices That's growing funny. up. Yeah, <laughs> but I had before that I had you know Coach Forehand. I still remember like my junior high coaches. <laughs> like it's just, it just it's it's like there's so many things that we as men can do to pour back in the community. Like my pastor coaches Lincoln Park High School oh, soccer. Wow. wow. And so he is our full time pastor, but he coaches. Yeah. And so um, uh, anyway, so I was just thinking like as you were talking about adoption, I was like, yeah, that's cool. But there's a lot of opportunity for yeah. men that maybe, you know what, hey, maybe God hasn't blessed you financially and you guys are struggling to take care of the the, the family you yeah. have right now. Yeah. There's still things that you can do to bless those because unfortunately in the world we live in today, there are way less and less fathers in the home than there used to be. 100%. It's a massive problem in America. I was going to talk, but we don't have time today. There'll be another podcast. We could talk yeah, about the we'll why of that, we'll do another you know, one. because that's sad. It sucks. And, and I think the generation right now that's retarded, yeah. <laughs> is result of yeah. lack of discipline. Even the approval thing I was talking to you about. When you have a single mother and that mother's doing everything she can, she's trying. Yeah. There's just something missing when dad's not mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Either even if it's the discipline or the approval or the just the, the, the manly love. It's a different thing. And I'll give you a quick example of this yeah. and we yeah. can we can go to whatever. My my daughter's one, one in one month. Uh Probably about three months ago, she was like, she did something like wrong. And we're still teaching her like no means no. Mm-hmm. Like yes means yes, no means no. Like at a very young age, we're like, we need you to understand. Because like I don't want her running into the street and I tell her no and she doesn't listen to me. Like so right. we're very much like, you know, you can say that we're mean, but we're going to – Save your life. Yeah. You saw how I reacted to my daughter. I'm not a mean father at all. Um, but my wife – um. My, my daughter sent some, so my wife, you know, tapped her on the hand. Like, no, we don't do that. Madeline hit her back. Okay. My wife told me about it. Okay. So I didn't do anything. Obviously, it's been a couple hours. So our nine-month-old has doesn't even remember that happened, yeah, yeah. right? Well, later, something happened to where Madeline directly disobeyed someone. I said, hey, don't touch that. She looks at me. Touches it. I walk over to her, and I look at her, and I just say, No. <laughs> didn't touch her just the man the just dad yeah just dad coming in the situation saying hey i'm disappointed in you daughter yeah that's not cool there's a 
different thing than what happened with mom that dads have today. 100%. And so, and vice versa. I think that's really like a daddy's girl thing. And you have like sons that sometimes do that with their mothers. Yeah. But when you have both in the family, God created the family for a reason to have a husband and a wife, because there are times that I'm, I'm going to be callous and I'm not going to understand the emotion and my wife's going to get it. But then there's going to be times that my wife doesn't understand why mm-hmm. our kids are acting some way and I'm going to get it. 100%. And that's why it's so important. And yeah. so, anyway, I don't know why I got on that tangent. No, I think, it's a great, I think it's a great topic, man. A lot of young boys get lost because they don't have love from a man. Yeah. It's, it's, it sounds saucy, and people probably think it's a little, little happy pride month, but it, it, it is it's, June, so we're yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but it, it's true, man. Like, yeah. if you don't have another, a man that actually truly loves you, you yeah. become lost. I think a lot of these young boys that end up being living a homosexual lifestyle, it's just because they never had a man that loved them. Yeah. And I think they're looking for that masculine energy, and they're, they're now they're looking for it in a in a in a mate. Yeah. If you don't grow up with that balance, then you begin to seek. That's it. a good point. Like young girls, the reason they become incredibly promiscuous is because they don't have a man that actually love them. They're looking for that love from a man in the wrong places. Yeah. If their dad was there and their dad showed them love and affection, they don't seek affection from the masculinity side of it right they don't they're not looking at a man to love them and make them feel protected because they're protected by their dad same thing with 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 men like these some of these men that become promiscuous a lot of times with women is because they have mama issues yeah and then when they're when men are with other men it's because they got daddy issues Mm. man they they they're searching for that a love and affection and authority and protection uh from a man and because they didn't have it in daddy and so that's how that's how I look at it, man. Men are important. I'm glad you said that because, you know, coaching is very important too. And I, and I just want to, while I'm here on earth, mm-hmm. I want my legacy to be that. You know what? Brandon Tatum really was a great example. Yeah. Brandon Tatum really changed my life where millions of people are saying when I'm dead that, man, that guy really changed my life. God allowed that guy. They, I want them to see God using me in their life. Exactly.